Hello, Crystal and Currents. It is that time again for Magical Monday Motivation. How is everyone doing today? We are getting very close to being out of Mercury Retrograde, which has probably been <clears throat> a bit of a doozy for most, but hopefully not everyone. Hopefully most of you are having an easy Mercury Retrograde. We will also do free card readings for the Sacred Healing Project subscribers, so make sure you drop your questions in the chat as well. But before I go into which crystals like I'm really drawn to right now, which I mean from the title you can see, but what are you all currently working with? What crystal is currently resonating with you? Drop it in the chat, whether you're watching live or on replay. Hey Joni, welcome. I just want to pull this up and make sure that I can, whoa, new holder as well. I'm going to make sure that I can see you all. <clears throat> I know Ocean Jasper has certainly been one that I've been working with a lot, but also definitely the Kyanite with the Amethyst. And it's a unique combo when you work with these two. If you're having a hard time kind of discerning truth or reality from maybe what could be a deception, maybe what you're deceiving yourself about even. A lot of times for me during Mercury Retrograde, even the way I feel about something is just off. It just is a little bit different than what I would say is the reality or truth. Just little tiny things that will kind of notify me that what I'm feeling or doing is not probably... One, serving my greatest good, but two, is not really even me. Sarah, welcome. Thank you for joining. So when I'm having issues also tapping into the reality of how I truly think and feel, Amethyst is one of those that I go to a lot. But then to really be able to communicate what that feeling is, Kyanite. Kyanite and Amethyst together are two of the most magical crystal combinations that there are. They very much are two stones that are very protective and cleansing and uplifting as well. So if you're kind of a little bit down on yourself, even these two stones together really help you discern what is the reality with the situation, what is the reality with yourself, and how do you truly feel? Or are you deceiving yourself a little bit and falling into a state of, you know, feeling that's just not you? Megan, welcome, welcome. Uh, so with that, these two crystals, the kyanite and the amethyst together, just give you a nice protective barrier, but also help you communicate what your needs are. And I think a lot of times, especially during retrograde when communication is a problem anyways, we need help with being able to communicate how we actually feel. And I don't mean we just need help communicating to others how we feel. We need help communicating to ourselves. Like, what is reality and what am I really feeling in this moment? And what do I need to say to myself, possibly to others as well, to move through it? And when you feel that a little bit of that anxiety or depression coming up with that, the amethyst takes away that, that stalling almost and that I'm scared to react. Like, almost throwing you into a fight, flight, or freeze response. These two together will keep you out of that. So right now, these are my go-tos along with Ocean Jasper. Definitely have been helping me through this retrograde for sure. So with that, if anyone else wants to drop what they are working with right now with their stones, drop that in the chat as well. But we can also jump right into the crystal or the crystal, the card readings for the Sacred Healing Project subscribers. So any of you lovely Sacred Healing Project subscribers that are in here, drop your questions that you may have and I will pull cards for you. We'll use the tarot as always. You all know the tarot is my first love for cards and always my go-to for really getting to the root of problems. So any questions you might have, could be love related, could be job related, could be moving, should you move to a new place, should you move to a new house, what does that look like, um, any relationship stuff, could just be a general card pull of how does your next week look. If any of you lovelies would like those, go ahead and place it in the chat and we'll pull live. For any of you Sacred Healing Project subscribers, 
And if you are not a Sacred Healing Project subscriber, you can do so at www.sacredhealingproject.com. So along with this, you would also have access to energy psychology, functional medicine, crystal healing, and shamanic earth medicine. Joni's the first one in here. Is there a staffing change coming to my office? Let's find out. And also, Joni, I actually want to grab a pendulum too. So, whoa. Let's do the pendulum as well. Is there an office change coming? Yes, there is. Let's get some more insight into that. Do you have another question around that, Joni? If the, since the answer is yes, there is a staffing change. Uh, do you have more questions in regards or insight into how that looks for you? I think I'll pull a general card pull for how that looks for you specifically. My jewelry, Joni, is now the magical owner of one of these. This is one of those Chevron Amethyst with the Amethyst Druzy on top. Mine has Tiger's Eye. Joni's has Coral and an Amethyst uh, chain. What else do I have on? I have Amethyst on here with Opal, Turquoise, and a Kyanite ring. I see Megan and Sarah. You guys have questions? I will get to you as well. So let's pull for Joni. What does this look like for her? How does this look for Joni? see well it's not ugly Joni really it's not so the first card that comes up is the ace of pentacles which is that new energy new flow right this is very indicative of new job um, somebody moving out it's a lot of new energy though but <laughs> it looks to me because the next card that we got is the six of wands it looks to me like you guys are going to be celebrating actually who moves out um it's not necessarily going to be ugly, but it's one of those, Two of Swords is the next one that came in. It's one of those where it seems like your hands are kind of tied in the situation and you don't really know what to do. So there's a little bit going on to where you're just not sure where to go from there. And certainly someone is going to be left out in the dark, you know. The Hermit card, there's going to be a lot of contemplation that goes on with this, a lot of thinking, and really when we're looking at those swords with the Hermit card coming together, there's a lot of truth that's going to be revealed. A lot of truths are going to come out. Um, I would say, is it ugly? No. Is it dramatic to an extent? Yes. Uh, but the outcome, though, you're not going to be... It's The outcome card is the King of Cups. So this is where you're really coming back into that very balanced emotional energy. So with the moving out is going to bring a lot of balance. So with that, you don't have to worry about, <laughs> is it for the best? The move is for the best. Is it going to be a little bit dramatic to start with? Yeah. But will it chill out? Yes. And it's also going to be for the greatest good. Does that make sense, Joni? Um I think it's going to be a little bit shocking because while it's the Ace of Pentacles and it's that new job change, I don't feel like it's somebody new that's moving out. It's somebody that's been there for a while. Um, kind of the shifting of the old guard, so to speak. So it's a change, but it is a change for the better as well. And I just want to get you a little bit of insight too from the Oracle. What is Joni's power in this? Give us some guidance for Joni. Yeah. So here's the first one that came out for you is that conscious connections. You have to really pay attention to what's going on. Um, I see the fish instantly in this, which brings me to that Piscean energy. So it's going to feel a little wishy-washy in the beginning. It's going to feel like it's an emotional roller coaster and you don't really know why it's happening or where it's going. And it's not going to make a ton of sense. So the next guidance that comes up for you is listen to the truth. 
try to find the truth in the situation and see where it's at. Be very discerning um, from a logical standpoint and don't get caught up so much in that emotional turmoil because it doesn't have anything to do with what is being presented from an emotional standpoint. So stay in the logical, <laughs> stay very much in this logical place, but also do not disconnect from what you feel. So while I say stay out of the emotional turmoil, this is everyone else's emotional, emotional turmoil. Stay out of that. But really stay connected to what, how does this actually feel for you though? And then make that decision from a very judgment-free zone. Um, stay out of that, like, don't get caught up in it, basically, is the moral of this story. Just stay out of it and tap into how you feel about the situation and what the logics or the truth is behind that. And then really just stay in that place of higher consciousness where you're staying out of that judgment mode. Don't get drawn in. And I, <laughs> I see your comment come in now. It's a necessary change. You just feel the dread and drama. Feel yourself getting sucked in. Yeah, and honestly, that's what the cards just told you not to do. So <laughs> stay very discerning during this time. Um, it's going to be over fairly quick. So you're not going to have to sit in that energy for very long. So that's a plus. You're not going to be here too long with it. And let me see. Sarah, I believe you are next. Is this a spirit thing I can help him with? Well, let's go to the pendulum. Keeps waking up crying at night. Is it a spirit thing? It's not a spirit thing. Um, is it just him coming into a consciousness state? Yes, yeah, so let's give you some guidance. It's not a spirit. Um, it's nothing negative either. Um, sometimes when we're transitioning through life stages, especially... We do have specific dreams, right? Because we go somewhere when we're asleep. Where do we go, though? Who knows? I would say I know when my kids started doing that, especially, I would ask them, you know, what were they scared of? Where were they at? What's it look like? What is the thing? Um, and that would help a lot. But I want to get you a little bit from the Oracle. Um, I think as we level up, which, Sarah, you, of course, have been leveling up, so do our children, so when we're kind of coming into like the understanding that there's something bigger than us, the psychic intuition, the other lives, new worlds, things like that, our kids have that same leveling up with us because we're clearing out old baggage for them too while we clear out for ourselves. So there can be kind of the ripple effect where there's new things that you have to pay attention to, like them waking up. So let's just get you a little bit of insight from the Oracle though. And... Let me see this. Yeah, I, the first card I got is the softly, the tender touch. Um, and also, I'm really drawn to the, um, the grid across the back. So I really take a look at like the sacred geometry. So when you're asking what can you do or to help them work through, I would say gridding the room with like selenite or tourmaline is what I would look towards. Um... And then also the next one was trust yourself. So coming into that space too of like, you know, you, muscle testing pendulum, whichever one you want to use, really muscle test or pendulum to see what it is you can do to help. But I know like selenite, the um, salt blocks even, the Himalayan salt blocks underneath beds can really help with nightmares or things like that if that's why they're waking up as well. So definitely just take a look at a couple of those things, but it's not evil spirits. It's nothing that you need to be concerned with from that aspect. It's just the awareness. They're coming into an awareness space that it's just new. It's new remembering, so to speak. And then Megan, I think you are next. Let's take a look at you. Looking for guidance on moving. In general, should we look for another fixer upper or a more stable place to stay while investing? Let's look at that. Let's go to the pendulum first. So should we look for another fixer upper? Uh, no to that one, Megan. More stable space place to stay while investing. Yes. Uh, let's get you some insight, though, on how that looks. Will it be an easy transition? What does the transition or move itself look like? see what they got for you. Mm -hmm. 
I know. I thought those questions would be reversed too, Megan. But I do want to see what we have. Ooh. So the first one that came up is the Nine of Wands. So you've been carrying a bit of a baggage. You've been carrying a lot right now, and you're starting to get a little bit tired of carrying the load yourself. So you are going to have to kind of shift your mindset into being willing to give some of that load to someone else. That can also be financial because the next one was the Five of Pentacles coming out to where even from a financial standpoint, like you've kind of been stonewalling someone in a situation or not being willing to receive assistance or help with things. But now is your opportunity to kind of let go of some of that load that you've been carrying and let someone else carry it with you. Um, and if you don't, like <laughs> the two people kind of left out in the cold, so to speak, is the best phrase with this card when you're looking at that five of pentacles. To where, you know, like, if you don't heed the advice, like, somebody kind of gets left behind. They're not fulfilled. They don't like how that feels to not be included, so to speak. But if you follow through with that, the card that you got is the star. Which is new beginnings, right? So, like, she's... <laughs> I do want you to just take notes, though, that she's taking from a full pool and then pouring her river over here. So, she's only using what she needs. She's not taking more than she needs to move forward, but she's still in that feminine, that feminine aspect, too. So, it's that receiving state. It's being willing to give and receive at the same time. So, you're going to really have to tap into that feminine emotions to be able to come to the end to where it's a give and take. Um, but it's an equal give and take. No one is taking more than they need, and no one is giving more than they have to give. And I want to take a look at the oracle just to see if there's more here for you as well <laughs> so this is where I find it really funny because cards <laughs> don't lie right so the first thing you got out of the oracle Megan is the release the dark wound let love live so you have to really step into that what happened to you in the past isn't going to happen to you in the future and it's not the same it's not the same partnership that you're dealing with now that you were dealing with then so it's very very different and like you can see that you're just this person is literally releasing the fish and letting them go so you got to let that old baggage go <laughs> just have to let it leave this will resonate more for you Megan because of the card um <laughs> the names of the card be the hunter not the hunted uh, I think this was pulled for validation for you from a personal standpoint that I'm not going to go into I'm sure you can get the understanding here um, there's also the grid of life here with the owl which the owl is very much it sees what it sees and the owl is also wisdom so this card for me like if we look at eight is on here too it's also about abundance so the personal meaning for you, I'm not going to go into, I'm sure you can make the correlation of be the hunter, not the hunted, based upon the naming convention. But it's also abundance, Meg. So like you're coming into that space of if you work with this individual, abundance is just going to naturally flow. And then the final card was the legacy of light. So instead of focusing on the ancestral or even the parental constraints that you grew up with, that doesn't have to be your legacy. And you also have to recognize that within our lines, there is also a legacy of light. There are many light workers within our lines and tons and tons of really good relationships that have come out of it. And you need to focus on those and let go of the ones that maybe are in the forefront of your mind of how relationships are, because those aren't the only ones that are real. So really come into that new space of being. Hopefully that resonates for you. And I see Alexis is in here. Did you ask for one? Yeah, general card poll. Alexis, you're up. Let me go ahead and pull this for you. It's a general reading for Alexis for this week. Ooh, Alexis, are you having a balancing act right now? A lot of like trying to figure out where you need to prioritize or how to even prioritize. 
see a lot of that in your in your week ahead. So the two of pentacles is still that fairly new energy, but a lot of focus around finances and abundance. But it's really quite literally that balancing act of where do I go? And then when I pair it to that four of cups, which came out right after it, when I look at these two together, it's really the balancing act. And right now I would say maybe you're focusing on the bad or the not so ideal, right? And maybe missing some of the options or offerings that are available to you that you just haven't explored it because you're so focused on what could go wrong, so to speak. Um, even to the extent that you're looking outward with this two of wand energy at different options, when really you probably have what you need at your disposal right now, you just need to look at what you currently have instead of looking outwardly. I do kind of feel like this is more finance based than necessary. Well, there's an emotional tie too. This is financial, but also there's a very, very strong emotional tie to this too. So it's an emotional decision around finances that you're going to have to really look at. Uh, this week and make a decision on um, rather than playing the balancing act because otherwise you're going to wear yourself out. Um, it's going to become too much. And the next card that came out of that too is the Ten of Swords energy, which looks like a very like dark card, right? But it's not. Ten of Swords is you need to rest. Like you need to lay the swords down and take a rest for a moment and just let it flow. Let whatever's going on kind of iron itself out, so to speak, but take a rest before you make the decision. Um, you're wearing yourself out kind of at both ends right now, burning that candle at both ends, so to speak. So now let's go ahead and get you some Oracle. What's the Oracle got to say? Yeah, so you got the listening to truth as well. So again, this card is really kind of trying to caution you to let go of some of the emotional responses that might be going on and really look inward for like what is the actual truth to this though. And then the next one that came up is the spirals of manifestation, which this is just saying that you have what you need to be able to create what it is that you want. You have everything you need at your disposal to manifest whatever it is that you are looking for. You just have to look for that inspiration. Like tap into yourself, sit back, take a little bit of a break and find the inspiration so that you can manifest what you want rather than really sitting in this emotional response, so to speak. And if you do that, it will certainly work out whatever it is that you're going through. So I don't see any other questions. So with that, I'm going to let you all go. And I hope you have a great rest of your Monday. You can jump into Sacred Healing Project to see Janessa on Wednesday. I will be back in there on Friday. And then next week, Janessa will also have a motivational workout on Monday. But on the 20, let me make sure I have the right date. The 21st. Janessa and I are having our first in-person workshop that is also being offered online as well. So if you are interested in really kind of tapping into what is energy psychology actually and what is crystal healing, how can they work for me in my life, and what are some simple techniques from each of those that we can utilize in our every single day lives. So if you've ever wondered what is this energy psychology or what does this crystal healing actually have to offer me, message Janessa or myself. You can find her at Fiercely Radiant Soul. You can find me here at Crystal and Currents. Um, I also have it linked in the events under Crystalline as well. So message us to get signed up and reserve your seat for that. It, again, it's in person or it is virtual. And it will be held in person at Emerald Healing Arts and Apothecaries. So with that, have a great rest of your week. And I will talk to you all on Friday.